Hey, and welcome to Clips Comics Curation Episode 2, where I'm going to try and talk about books coming out this week, things on the rise, and try to make sense of it all for new collectors or collectors like me. So let's get started. Let's go right to, let's go right to <clears throat> Key Collector. Okay, I didn't start a key collector, but here we are. All right, so new comics this week. Uh, it is officially Wednesday, so key collectors should be on point. We've got the first appearance of multiple Mike characters, including a Doomsday Mike, so I'm assuming all fifth dimension characters. Uh, I, I haven't read the issue yet. I did already pick it up. Batman Off World number four. They have been, like, this book has been supposed to be coming out for months, and I think, like, issues four and five drop at the same time. Uh, it actually came out, I saw it in the shop. It's the first appearance of a Thanagarian bounty hunter. Who knows if it'll take off or not. Um, Blown Away, uh, new series. Um, I don't know the writer all too well, but they worked on a few things. Um, I don't know if it's for me. You know, I'm a, sadly, I'm a mostly Marvel and DC guy. Uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths, the foil facsimile. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. You know, Crisis on Infinite Earths is just a classic story of what DC did to officially reboot their universe in the 80s. This is the anniversary. All the issues are coming out foiled, just like Secret Wars. And of course, the regular editions and blank variants too. So be on the lookout. All right. This giant size Hulk number one, first appearance of Patchwork Joe could be interesting. Uh, key of the week from Jim's Comics. Hulk has been really good. Philip Kennedy Johnson's doing an amazing job on the series. Again, if this is your thing and you really like Hulk battling monsters, like supernatural threats, all things Hulk have been really great. I know some people just want him to just, you know, get angry, be large, beat things up, and like that's their Hulk. Um, what if Venom number three, first mention of Maddie Sin, who we met on the She Hulk Disney Plus series? If that's your thing, if you think she's going to be a big deal, have at it. Also, I mean, people have just been picking up this Venom What If series just because. Love Me, number one, from Matt Cave. I'm familiar with Matt Cave Studios. I do like them very much. I'm not familiar with this book, so I can't tell you much. It's a number one. A robot falls in love but encounters trouble when he discovers the object of his infection is entangled with the mafia that runs his city. Key of the week for Key Collector. Legacy issue of Nightwing 300. They still don't have the Dan Mora cover in here, or did they? Did they? I emailed them last night. I still don't see it. I still, I emailed them last night. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Look at that. Get this cover. This is the cover to get for legacy number 300. Beautiful. Yes. <laughs> I'm trying to get it to work. I don't know what I'm doing. It's fine. All right. Back to where I was at. Where was I at? Oh, this is terrible. No, I don't like that. Oh, I like that less. Mm, maybe a little better. Oh, I like that a little bit more. Mm. I don't even know what I had. I don't even know if I was doing it right. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just terrible. Just terrible. Look at this. This is so bad. I'm so bad. All right. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's just, I'm sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. All right. So, Rock Sun Percent Store number one. Chad Hammer as Store, a corporate mascot for Rock Sun. If you're down for the storyline, I mean, it's a first full appearance. You got to grab it. Uh, he had a cameo in the last issue, which had a gorgeous freaking cover last issue by uh, by Alex Ross that was available. Star Wars High Republic Adventures Saber for Hire. First appearance of Ketrep Soth, son of Lena So, Supreme Chancellor of the Galactic Empire. I, you know what? I feel like Star Wars is putting out a first appearance every freaking week. Marvel's putting out Star Wars. Dark Horse putting out Star Wars. Everybody's... I, and it's few and far between. It's like one book out of many will be like, oh, yeah, this one was a hit. 
because of something like the cover. Star Wars Mace Window number three, first appearance of the Dusk Weavers. This one is Marvel in canon con in continuity. So like, I think this, I feel like the Mace Window book is a book that people may actually want to buy. So my personal opinion, this is really hard, just giving out opinions. And I'm like, but buy what you love, buy what you love, but also mm, be weary. Speaking of buying what you love, I definitely picked up Superman number 13, House of Brainiac Part 2. I got the foil, I got the regular cover. I love it. it this is definitely for me. And the House of Brainiac saga is going to tie into Absolute Power, uh, which will have us facing off, our heroes facing off against Amanda Waller and the Zeranar failsafe threat and uh, Brainiac Queen, who I get, we got a glimpse of in the last issue of Action Comics, and I believe we see more of here. Ultimate Black Panther number three. I've enjoyed the first two issues. It is the first full appearance of Ultimate Storm on the cover in the book. I mean, so far, I have loved Ultimate Spider-Man, loved Ultimate Black Panther. I'm enjoying Ultimate X-Men. I, It does need to go somewhere, but I, I, you know, it hasn't left me feeling awful yet. All right, let's... Oh, sorry. I want to go to the CBS side. Let's go to CBS side. All right. So down here at the bottom, we got the Star Wars Dawn of the Jedi Force Storm. Uh, new writer attached to the James Manigold feature that will supposedly feature the origins of the Jedi Order. So this book is a good investment. And look, a CGC 9.6 even went for a 360. And again, these are the ones that seem to take off. And the ones that seem to take off seem to be the older Dark Horse ones. So just start, start rummaging those back bins if you have access to them. Evangeline number one. I do listen. Listen, I don't. Maybe this book still belongs in the dollar bin. It is picking up steam because there's movie. There's a movie potentially in the works. Of all the right life felt stuff that I don't even know, man. Like I just I don't know how to feel about it. And speaking of not knowing how to feel, what if number thirty seven? This is the first appearance of Shalabal as a Herald Starglow. So Shalabal is supposed to be the Silver Surfer that we meet in the next Fantastic Four movie. It's not Norrin Rad, who's the classic Silver Surfer, which everybody really is kind of, not everybody, but many people are up in arms about. So I don't know what to tell you. I mean, like the what ifs are just cool in general. I like it. I don't know if I like it for $210. I mean, like I, this is not getting my kind of stamp of approval. Super villain team up number five. You know, I support this. I bought two copies of it right away for 10 bucks a piece. Um, you know, there are, um, there's not too many 9.6s and 9.8s out there, so that's a thing. And I missed out on a 7.0 because I did not understand what's happening. I had it, I was eyeballing it because I was looking for Marvel first appearances, so it was on my radar because of my own research, not because I was had any clue that the Shroud would be Moon Knight. But that was a good reveal. And some people are not down for it because like, well, who cares about the Shroud? Well, we might learn to care about the Shroud. You know, did you care about Adam Smasher before Jeff Johns rocked it out of the park on on JSA? Of course not. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go pick up the Jeff Johns JSA room. Now, speaking of great writing, Phil Kennedy Johnson, Incredible Hulk number 11 is the 1 in 25 cover. It's an Arthur Adams variant. Again, classic Arthur Adams. Wonderful. It's a great cover, but it's also a great book. Covers selling from 35 to 50, which is above ratio price, as they call it. If you're a collector, like you love the art of Arthur Adams, then yeah, go for this. I mean, otherwise, I mean, I say just wait, it's just a cover. But do check out the book, which I think is very good. And speaking of 1 in 25, so we've got Thrawn Alliances number four. This is very new. Um, It's already going, they're saying for 50 to $60, even a high of 88. Again, if you're really into the character of Thrawn and Star Wars mythos, then yes, absolutely go get it. But at the same time, like, I do not understand the highs and lows and the fever pitches of the Star Wars comics. So I am not the guy. But I can tell you a little bit about the world of wood. Dave Stevens, who passed away in 2008 uh, due to, um, I believe it was a, a type of cancer called hairy leukemia. I know that that sounds very strange. Uh, to hear or and for me to say, but um, I do believe that that was the case. Harry cell leukemia, yes. So uh, that is unfortunate, but you know, he's also the creator of the Rocketeer and a lot of attention has come his way uh, recently and his books are just selling like clockwork and they're good. And he was a good artist and 
he's got quite the legacy. So yes, number four, number three, Dave Stevens artwork. If you can see them, pick them up. World of Wood number one, DNA agents number 24. Snatched them up. Yusagi Ojimbo, the crow, number one, one in 40 cover. All right. Also ended up selling for 465 after 33 bids. The I'll oh, see, it seems suspect given the jump in price, which is true. There are people out there who are just driving stuff up and it's crazy. And I don't really like that. But Yusagi Ojimbo is a is like a cool character. He's got a long history and some history of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um so yeah, I mean, if you could grab this book on the cheap and you know, you're a big fan, absolutely go for it. Uh, otherwise, I don't know. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Last Run, number one. Copies of this are still available. You know, I'm sure some of the raws are over a hundred bucks. You might be lucky and get one cheaper. Uh, it's a big book and it's got the thin spine. So it's there. So the raw ones are not always gonna be in the best condition. You can probably find a reader copy at a reasonable price. And if not, there's like four printings of this. So you have ample access to get your hands on them and read the story and enjoy. I literally found issues two, three, and four in a dollar bin and picked them up for a friend of mine just a month and a half ago. All right, so that's it with CBSI. Let's cut to the new comics of the week. So I have sorted this based on the based on the week and based on what I'm familiar with in general, but it's still not perfect. Um, I don't know this humility machine, Washington blood, 7174 AD, the agent almost dead. This amazing Spider-Man facility, the one in 25 is a cool Tarin Clark freaking variant cover. Why his is this bomb one in 25? I do not understand why did this Amazing Spider-Man 255 reprint need a bomb ass one in 25. I do not know. I don't know what's up with this. All I know is if you want the reprint, grab the reprint. But if you want to get that cover, get that cover because that cover is great. Uh, I'm not familiar with Animal Pound. Army of Darkness Forever. It's more Ash versus the Evil Dead. And if that is your thing, go pick this up. You should be on the series. Assassin's Apprentice is a crazy series based off a series of novels. It's pretty darn good. It's about a young boy who is different. And of course, you all know what's coming after that. You know, shifts in power. You know, there's uh, there's royalty and, and, and warring involved. And, you know, trying to become the best little soldier you can. It's really convoluted, but I love it. It's like, it's a little... A little Game of thrones but with more sorcery, if that's what you like. And uh, But of course, you know, we've got a more fixed main character than we did than we would like with Game of Thrones, where we have like seven main characters for following around and all their, all their wolves. I'm not familiar with Assassin's Creed. Avengers Twilight, third printing for number one and number two with the Alex Ross covers. Great if you want to grab them, if you didn't get your chance. It's a fantastic story. You should definitely be reading it. Avengers Twilight number five has came out. Great cover. Second printing of the Batman First Night came out and it's a great story. So if you missed out on first print, grab second print, grab issue two. It's a fantastic Batman story. Dan Jurgens is working on it. The man's a legend in this industry and he came to do the work on this first night. Uh, we've got, I've covered Batman and Batman, Off, Batman, Superman, and Batman Offworld. Uh, Beyond Real, I'm not familiar with. Black Widow and Hawkeye. Also, the only thing I like about this so far, and I haven't read a single issue, I just have them it's on the to be read list. She is still a Venom Black Widow, and I love it. And I love the vampire variant cover that they did, which is like the ultimate Dracula introducing um, Satana, except it's just, it's Hawkeye and, uh, and Black Widow. So I thought that was a fun cover, but otherwise, I don't know what else to tell you about the series. Uh, Blade Runner 2039, number 12. Again, if that's your thing, if you know, <laughs> do, uh, do, you know, do robots dream of electric sheep? I don't know, but if that is your thing, you go for that. Bloodshot Unleashed, if you're into Valiant, jump on it because that company seems to be bought by somebody new every other month. Blown Away, like I said, not too familiar. Blue Book, at least these are about government release stories and they just tell them and what could have been alien abduction or whatever. These are those tales. I did enjoy issue one of the first series, and then I really kind of lost interest immediately after that. But if you like alien stories that are based on 
based on true events of people that may or may not have accurately depicted them, this book is for you. Bombshell and Tom Tom. Hey, Mark Sparacio is a good friend, so I'm always going to be here for Bombshell and Tom Tom. That is his book. That is definitely his cover. And there's a very hidden, and I'm not showing it here. It's too bad. All right. Look at this. We just were all over the place. Everything I was looking at kind of shifted. All right. Well, these are the things I do want to see. Let's see. Publishers. All right. See, I'm doing Marvel. I'm doing DC. Image. Dynamite. Boom. Dark Horse. IDW. Um, who else do I... I put Xenoscope for you guys because I'm not really there. Udon, yes, because they do Street Fighter. We'll do a little Archie. All right, so yes to this, yes to this, yes to this, yes to this. Definitely yes to this. Let's see that really beautiful cover. How did how did how did I click on the wrong thing? I want the Dan Moore cover. Again, I'm not. Apparently, I can't click on the right cover. This is terrible. There we go. There we go, everybody. Look at that. Look at that. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. For that freaking legacy issue. Will I go back to where I started? Probably not. I probably ruined all of this. All right. All right. That's what happens, folks. And also, all this loading is just terrible. All right. I mean, Spectacular Spider-Man, number two. I happen to love it, so that's great. Jay Garrick, The Flash, number six. Great series. This is the final issue of the miniseries. Go pick it up. Highly recommend. Ultimate Black Panther, highly recommend. John Constantine, Hellblazer. Wow. Dead in America, number four. Uh, if you're a John Constantine fan, definitely go pick this up. Uh, Roxxon presents store number one. I've already said my piece on that. If it's for you, it's for you. If you're really following Thor, uh, Fall of the House of X number four. Did I miss this? I feel like I missed this. I might have missed this, and that's one of my books. Boy, um, I don't know. I grabbed Spider Boy this week. I definitely grabbed Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is the best DC on the book on 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 the market. Whether you like to hear that or not, it's fantastic. Um, Sam and Twitch, issue one didn't really do anything for me, so here we are. Dead X-Men number four, I like this, don't know what happened, don't know if it was supposed to come out today, I don't know why I don't have it, but I don't have it. Um, Helen of Windhorn, not familiar, but what a great freaking title. My Miles Morales, Spider-Man number 19, hey, Rabble is his new definitive villain, I'm kind of down with it. A lot of people apparently are not, and I'm just like, listen, in my opinion, they're trying to build this boy up, so like, this is it. Uh, we got Moon Man number two from Image. I still have no idea what that's about. I can't even pretend. IDW, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Untold Destiny of the Foot Clan number two. What if Venom number three? Assassin's Apprentice, I gave you my piece. Batman Off World. But where are the Planet of the Apes? I don't know a single person who's read any of the Planet of the Apes yet. That from the minute Marvel started printing them, I know no one who said anything. I think I know a few people who only grabbed the number one because they like the cover. Elvira meets HP Lovecraft. Sounds great. Particularly because I just love Elvira. We got Giant Size Hulk number one. I already said my piece. I think it's a worthy grab. Kill Your Darlings number eight. Again, not familiar with. Uh, Mad number 37. No. Spawn 352. Yes, baby. Yes. Spider Boy number six. Absolutely. Spider Woman number six. This particular cover seems to be hot. Don't know why. I did pick up Spider Woman number five because Spider Boy was present and I grabbed this one for the cover. Star Wars The High Republic, Saber for Hire. Again, if that's your thing. Titans number 10. Listen, I love Tom Taylor. I don't know what happened to Tom Taylor the other day that people started attacking him, but whatever. I think it's a bunch, a bunch of rubbish. He's a good dude. He does good work, but he does good work on mini series more than anything else this titans has just not been working for me at all i know a lot of people who are just barely content with it or not content at all i'm not recommending this book like I, and and like they're, they're just i don't know what they're doing but basically they're just like sitting on the lit i don't know, resting their laurels while we have no justice league book and not the greatest titans book right 
obligation, not familiar, beyond real, not familiar, not familiar with that, washed in blood, not familiar, but that is a wicked homage cover to the Clockwork Orange. Uh, said my piece about Amazing Spider-Man, not familiar with the rest. Animal Pound, looks cute, not familiar. Army of Darkness, always great. Assassin's Creed, not for me, but if you like it, go for it. Uh, those reprints, I recommend. Still don't know about this Beyond Royal. Um, yes to this. Captain Marvel number seven, I don't know. Catwoman 64, I not Catwoman's doing nothing for me, but the David Nakayama covers are beautiful. This is a beautiful David Nakayama cover, so I definitely think you should give that a shot. I mean, look at that. That's a gorgeous cover. So if you're into cover collecting, this is definitely one for you. All right. I lost what I was sharing because that's that's the way it is. There we go. All righty. So Catwoman, um, Cauldron of Horror, if that's your thing. Conan the Barbarian is an amazing book. Issues five and six are supposed to be out today. All right. Uh, Christ of the Infinite Earth, I already gave it my seal of approval. Grab the plank, grab the foil, um, grab as needed. Also give it a read if you've never read it before. Um, I'm not familiar with this other stuff, but I am familiar with Dudley Datsun and the Forever Machine. This was a comicsology book. Now it's being produced by Dark, Dark Horse. It is Scott Snyder with Jamal Eigel. It's super freaking cool. I highly recommend, like what a creative team we've got on it. Look at this dog. I love the dog. I love all the characters, but I love the dog. There we go. He's lovely. All right, back to more new comics. I hate that I do this to myself. All right, uh, Eddie with E2, I'm not familiar. Gargoyles to Quest. I don't know what Dynamite's doing, and I didn't see this book, but it sounds good. Green Lantern War Journal number eight. I'm going to mention that really good, because, real quick, because it has been really good. Another Philip Kennedy Johnson book. Um, the United Planets have their own lanterns, and their lanterns can access the spectrum as needed, and they're kind of wiping out other lanterns. In the meantime, we got, you know, John Stewart over here, who's like, he could probably bring it all back for the Guardians. So let's see what happens there. Ghost Rider Final Vengeance number two. I did not see this on the rack. I'm not sure if it did or did not come out this week. Uh, definitely want to pick that up because the hood as Ghost Rider totally has me interested. Um, hack Slash Back to School. If you're into Hack Slash and, you know, somebody, <laughs> a serial killer of serial killers, that is for you. Uh, not familiar with, not, not familiar with any of this. I'm just going to keep going. Um, Toxic Commando, John Carpenter's Toxic Commando Rise of the Sludge God. Wow, interesting. Okay. Um, love me, we talked about My Hero Academia. Uh, yeah, quick stop if you're into that for Kevin Smith. Spectacular Spider Man. There's a second printing of an issue one, and there's a one in 25. Um, and there's actually a version cover of the one in 25. It does not have the trade logo on top. Uh, Mace Window I mentioned, if you'd like to uh, let's see what else we got. Ultimate Black Panther number two, second printing, has got a couple of variants. Ultimate Spider-Man number two, third printing. Wow, we're already at third printing for just issue number two. All right, and we're at second printing for Wolverine 44, which is part of the Sabretooth War. And Weapon X-Men number one got a second printing. That's neat. The cover is by Ildare Sinar, who I really love, although this is something that takes place in the book and they just made it a cover. Don't know how crazy I am about that. Maybe they just really did not expect this to go into second print. Maybe that's what happened. I'm willing to bet that's what happened. That, that's exactly what it looks like happened. Yeah, they're just like, they just did not expect this to go into second print. You asked for it, but can you handle it? Unbelievable. All right, so that is it. And I have taken up a good chunk of your time. I hope you enjoyed this. If you wanna talk more, read more, share more, let me know. Um, and I do wanna leave you, oh my God, my arms like hurt today. Um, my little collector's tip of the day, I did pick up 
some uh, bags and boards off of, uh, I bought this bolt pack of two and two. So it's a, it's 200 each of the bags and boards. Uh, what size did I get? Uh, I got, so it's regular, oh, I mean, go big, regular silver. See that? So I went with this size because I have some older books. Um, where are my older books? So I have some older books that, um, I have some older books that basically need, so like this, like it's beautifully packaged and I appreciate that, but the way this is, and this is Silver Age, the way this is, it just does not fit into my boxes properly. So I'm hoping, let's see here. I'm hoping that this is gonna do the trick. So, and it should, um, you know, my experience tells me that it should. So I hope so. Uh, and I'll let you know how that goes. All right, thank you. Um, thanks for joining me. Please like, please subscribe. And till next time, peace and love you guys. Thank you for following.